Welcome one, welcome all, welcome live to game time today. I'm your host, Michael Gill. I'm joined by the head coach of the University of Winnipeg, Westman women's basketball team, Tanya Matei. And uh, Tanya, thank you for joining me today on game time today. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. This is a great experience here with you, Michael. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I know you joined me a time or two back on my old radio show, so tip turning back the clock a little bit and doing a little update doesn't uh, doesn't hurt for both of us once in a while. Well, this is uh, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, ask you about uh, before we get into your big news of the. Uh, before you get into your big news of what what has happened with your program in the last couple of weeks, uh, just tell me, Tanya, quickly, you've been at the U of W for as long as I can remember. Um, you've been at, it seems like uh, your basketball program was on the verge of building something special leading into what was unfortunately uh, the pandemic. But... If you could take me back to the year before the pandemic, obviously you can anticipate a pandemic happening, but what what do you remember about your team from two years ago that stands out even today as we do this? Well, definitely, uh, you know, two years ago when we were up and running, um, you know, kind of our focus was to build a core. And we had a lot of young kids come in, you know, we had Robin and Jessica coming along very well. Uh, you know, we have uh, we had Jillian and and Michaela Funk coming in. So we had some uh, core kids who were adding to the program that were very talented, very youthful, uh, but you know, ready to train, ready to work hard, ready to grow. You know, and when they're playing uh, like a player like Faith Hezekiah, you know, that kind of added to the group. And so now two years ahead, uh, now we're, you know, with COVID, we are looking forward to next year and hoping, you know, with a mix of our core and veteran, uh, we'll be very talented. Obviously, uh, two years ago, you bring in Tiana Giles uh, back home, I guess, for her last year. She had to sit out, I guess, what would have been last uh the year before, she would have played for you last year or vice versa. But what does bringing Tiana in help your program before we get, obviously, to the more recent news? Kiana is a leader. You know, she's competitive. She's driven. And the opportunity for her to come back to Winnipeg and play for our program, you know, became – very well very good for our program and, and very good for the kids because she did have to sit out a year and and for that year she was sitting out she was rehabbing her knee but she was really you know working with the kids on the side she was being a great leader you know she was helping the young kids come along and she became a mentor for the core kids who were young and so we're really paying dividends, you know, from that because the kids now through COVID have trained incredibly hard because they see someone like Kiana who is absolutely driven to play and wants to win. So what does that do? I mean, you talk, there's no, I guess my question is, can you put a actual price value on having good leadership on a team? priceless you know it's uh when, when you have good leaders you know that they're they're gonna work away from the court they're gonna you know i have i'm very fortunate because i have a lot of good student athletes they're good students first they love being in school they're they're very strong academically and and they also have very a very good work ethic for training on their own and so i believe we've been very fortunate through covid because they have been driven they've done a lot on their own and it will it will pay off next year Obviously, let's just bring in kind of the news of the last two weeks that I know caught me by a surprise. Uh, now thinking back about it, uh, I had Dave Crutch on my show about two weeks ago, and 
Fainted back. He was kind of saying between the lines that something was coming. I didn't pick it up until I until I watched that interview back uh, after the news. Um, so good on uh, good on uh, Dave for being kind of coy about that. I didn't pick it up until after the fact. Um, you bring in uh, Taylor Filowich from UBC, and I mean the first thing that jumps out, Tanya, as much as. You know, she's a good basketball player, a good per, uh, did, uh, mentor, good leader and all that. Basketball players like this of her caliber don't exactly transfer every single year. Um, a move like this, I don't want to say it's unprecedented, but going back, there's not, there's not a lot of precedent for, you know, a major, major transfer such as Teo and uh, can you maybe – I know I don't know how much you're able to share with us, but how did this come about? I mean, I know in the press release it said uh, that she was looking uh, at her options, and she chose Winnipeg, uh, your program, just to just to kind of paraphrase. But I'm wondering if you could kind of take our our viewers as much as you can behind the scenes about on that. And what kind of played into that decision? Okay. At least from your, at least from your perspective. Absolutely. Well, we go back to 2014. Um, in 2014, uh, I was the head coach of the U17 uh, Manitoba Provincial Basketball Team, and and on that team, we had a lot of very very good players. We had Kiana Giles and her twin sister Kia. Uh, Keelan was a member of that team. Uh, Faith was also also a member of that team. Um, we had a very strong group. And interestingly, in that summer, um, because we had a very talented team, there were a lot of egos. And so we had to learn to adjust together, you know, managing and and handling. And, and, and so uh, when the team came out of playing in a tournament down in Chicago, we all sat down in a group and said, hey, what's our objective here? Uh, is our objective uh, number one to be recruited or is our objective number one to be um, winning a cha championship? And so we had to really kind of talk about that as a team because we had conflicting vibes. You know, we had a lot of kids who were very, very good and, and, and be being recruited by a lot of different universities in Canada and the U.S. Uh, but we were also very talented and were good enough to win it all that summer. And so when the kids came out of Chicago, they made up their mind that, okay, let's be on a mission to win. And so that group in 2014 went on to win the national championship uh, as, a, as a group. And, and they were amazing. They played phenomenal. And uh, that kind of began the journey, essentially. Um, after that, um, after winning, uh, you know, I had to put my University of Winnipeg hat back on. Because when you're coaching Team Manitoba, I can't wear my University of Winnipeg hat. So uh, after that season was done and we won, uh, I, I changed my hat and then I started recruiting. And I did recruit uh, many of those kids. Keelan uh, was one, uh, Kiana and Kia, Faith, um, uh, Jordy Tully, many great players, Raisel Guinto. Uh, so... Um, Faith was the one that committed right away to our program. Uh, Kiana and Kia went to Regina. Uh, Keelan went to UBC. Uh, Jordan Tully went down to Boise State. And uh, Rezal went down to uh, uh, Texas Tech, I believe. And so, you know, when I recruited them, you, you maintain a relationship. And that's important. You know, winning was phenomenal. We enjoyed, I mean, it was a great experience for all of us. And we had a special bond after that. Um, but after I recruited them and they kind of went through, some of them went their own way, you know, Keelan going to UBC, um, you maintain a relationship and, and you kind of hope if anything ever happens, maybe they'll come back. Right. And so Kiana started that, you know, Kiana and Kia left Regina and Kiana came to us at UW. Uh, Kia went on to Ryerson. And, um, you know, when it came up with Keelan, I think it was just kind of right time, right place because COVID shut us down for a year. 
And also her university coach retired. And the challenge for kids, you know, especially a veteran kid, when coaching staff changes, you know, that leaves, that opens a door, right? And so it opened a door. And, and the other fortunate thing too for us at the University of Winnipeg, we do have a graduate studies program. So it's not like she's just coming to UW to play basketball. She's coming for academic reasons. So she graduated from UBC, great student, and now she's entering our grad studies program and she's going to walk away with a master's in a year. So it's a win-win. Yeah, it, it's kind of one of those scenarios of the stars all aligning at once. Um, how, how does that help you going into this year? Because obviously you haven't met with your team, I'm assuming very much for in-person workouts, if, if at all. A lot of it, uh, like you said earlier, has been by themselves. But does that familiarity help you guys early on? Because like Faith is on the team, now you now you make all these additions and they like you said played with each other back in uh in 2014 does that kind of help you with with the springboard along with the younger players that maybe you know weren't involved in that absolutely you know one of the things that we started doing right when the pandemic started every wednesday night at nine o'clock we zoom as a team and so when we were Zooming, uh, when we started Zooming last spring, you know, we would come up with weekly challenges and, you know, we, we did a number of different things to keep our, th you know, ourselves entertained, but connected. And so we've been doing this since last spring and we're still Zooming, you know, uh, we Zoom again every Wednesday. So we'll do that until the season starts back up. And so last Wednesday, uh, Keelan joined our team for the first time on Zoom. So she got to meet everyone. And she she does know uh, many of the players on our team. And when you're competing against one another in our Canada West Conference, you know, you're preparing, you know about them. And our kids know Keelan very well because we played UBC, UBC a number of times. And she was always at the top of the, the scouting report. So, you know, her addition uh, into our program ha has been very smooth. And I, I kind of look ahead and I believe that it's going to be uh, pretty smooth right through. Finally, obviously, how do you go about, I mean, I know you said uh, T1 played for UBC. Has that mindset changed at all? Like, I know you go from trying to formulate a game plan against her to having her a part of your game plan and integrating her into the team system. That's got to be really, really exciting for you because, I mean, I know that if uh, Faith can play the way she did before she got injured last year and now you got Keelan on this team and you got some young kids that are some, some of the top provincial players, you know, this has the potential – barring injuries like we talked about before, um, to, to be a really, 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 really fun team that Winnipeg could really be proud of, and especially um, the U of W campus could, could really, really get excited about this team. Adding Keelan to the mix, you know, we don't have to scout now against her. Everybody mm -hmm. else has to scout against her. And and so, you know, with Keelan on the floor and Kiana and Faith and, you know, Anna, Anna, Anna came off, uh, you know, two seasons ago uh, as a rookie All-Canadian. Uh, yeah. Robin has been, uh, you know, s steady. She's, she's a very good scorer. She's really improved her defense. Uh, you know, Jessica Dick has really improved her game and has become a very, very good three-point shooter and can also go to the rim. So the putting Keelin in the mix, other kids – you know, their game is, is just going to blossom. And, you know, one of the things that I love about Keelan, she's a, she's a, she is a very good player. She's a very good leader, but one of the most impressive things about Keelan is she makes people around her better. And so, you know, adding her to the mix, Kiana is the same mindset. She makes people around her better. That's contagious. You know, faith, 
Faith was doing that already before Kiana and Keelan came in. You know, Faith was elevating the play of the team and, and giving as much as she could. And, and now she gets to play with two All-Canadians. And so the, our whole team will just elevate and play. And, you know, I, I think like the kids really believe if, if they work hard and we prepare for next season and we kind of check our egos at the door, we have a very good opportunity to be successful. Now, speaking about next year, we'll get back to your roster in uh, in just a little bit. But speaking about next year, the Tana West return to play uh, committee came up with conferences. You guys are stuck. Well, not stuck, but you guys are kind of placed with uh, Brandon, Manitoba, the two Saskatchewan teams. Uh, yeah. You guys probably will not see anybody from BC unless it gets into a playoff scenario. How does playing teams close to you and your natural rivals escalate things a little bit? Because I don't know about you, but the, when I go to watch, whether it's a volleyball game or your basketball game, you know, the games with the BC schools are, they're, they're good, they're good. You know, they're, they're good athletes. But when I, when I when I come into the gym and I walk into the gym and it's a Brandon or it's a Manitoba or it's, you know, one of your natural rivals, there just seems to be that that little extra, that little extra drive. You know, you don't want to lose those games. There's those, that extra hype games, if you will. Definitely. What, uh, what, what, what are your thoughts on playing just that small loop, uh, the, the uh, Saskatchewan teams and then Brandon and Manitoba and just how hyped that's going to be? I think the, the regional play is really going to benefit us. And, you know, obviously when we play Manitoba and Brandon, you know, the team is motivated. I mean, we, we kind of have an attitude going into those games right off the hop. And, you know, adding Kiana and Keelin into the mix of that, well, they're already from Winnipeg. So that rival for them, I mean, that's pretty intense. Um, you know, playing Regina, that's where Kiana played. So yeah. we'll be ready to play them, no question. Kiana will make sure of that. And and when we play Saskatchewan, well, when Kiana was playing against Saskatchewan and, and we played against Saskatchewan, you know, we we didn't like them, right? We want we wanted to compete. We wanted to give it everything we have. And and you know, they're the national champions. You know, they're they're a great team. They're coached very well. They have uh, an incredibly deep program and so that game i know the kids will be up for you know keelan lost to them uh her ubc lost to uh saskatchewan in the conference final so there's going to be some fuel so i'm not worried about a regional play and so one of the things that we look at now because we know we're in the region we do have a preseason. We want to make sure we try to see perhaps other Canada West teams in, in exhibition play and also try to get to see some teams maybe out east so that we can get a gauge on where we're at when we settle into regional play and then prepare for playoffs. Because there comes a point where, and I don't mean to be – you know, disrespectful to the regional team because that's not the intent of my question. But if you see Brandon in a preseason game, well, they got tape on you with what you're trying to look for, what you're going to look like. And, you know, I'm not too sure in a preseason event if you want to show all your cards, if that makes any sense. True. Yeah, true. And that's some coaches are going to feel that way. So you're probably not going to see your regional teams in exhibition play. Yeah, because you want to save what you have for when you see a team X number of times. It basically, it's going to be real, real interesting how that whole dynamic plays out. Yeah. And, and, you know, regional play is great for that rival, you know, Normally in Canada West, we play Manitoba twice, but now we get to see them four times, which is which is awesome. I mean, right. we want to play the Bisons. We want to play Brandon because though those games are hyped up. Um, I think I think for us, 
you know, our mindset will be if those teams are seeing us four times and they see us and they can prepare for us, that's going to make us even better because we're going to have to prepare for those moments. And, you know, how you do obviously in your regional play determines how you fit into playoffs. Right. I'm, I saw the paperwork. I'm not going to mention it uh, uh, in this interview. It, it is online if you want to see it. It is quite expansive. Um, I guess I should have preferenced the regional play with, I guess, how you feel about it. I know I had Dave Crutch on my show uh, two, three weeks ago when this was announced. Are you a fan of the regional play, or do you prefer to see everybody the way the way it used to be? Well, I guess with COVID, I I get it. Like, I understand that regional play is probably best for us. I mean, mm -hmm. we would like to see as many teams as possible because, you know, if you go into playoffs and there's a team you haven't played that you're going to play, that's tough. But I also like that. I don't have a problem with that. And so, um, you know, we keep a lot of different tools in our toolkit, you know, so when we're pairing for different opponents, you know, we might, for example, play man to man, we might play zone, we might play match, we might play junk defense. So we're not, that doesn't worry us. Regional play will kind of set the tone for playoffs. And, you know, back in the day when I played, which seems like a million years ago, uh, when we, when we played the Bisons and when we played, you know, Brandon, and when we played Regina, it was intense. It was tough. That feeling is back, right? Because you have two home and you have two away. So that regional play is going to be very exciting. And how well you do in regional play will decide where you fit in that scheme for playoffs. So we want to be able to do the best we can do. Uh, a couple more questions uh, as it pertains to your roster. I was looking up uh, some information uh, this morning uh, prior to recording this. Uh, you had actually played with Keelan's mom, uh, if I read that right, or you, you had a connection uh, s somewhere connected to this whole thing as well? Yes, back back in the day uh, when uh, Arlen played at U of M, uh, her sister also played Heather, at U of M, we did play against one another. And okay. uh, yeah, that was back in the day. It seems like a long time ago, but it was fun. <laughs> um, Just tiny up I can. I only have you for a few more minutes. Uh, let's shift gears quite rapidly uh, from the basketball side to a little bit of hockey. Um, you're a big Jets fan, you were telling me. Um, what were your thoughts on the Jets sweep of the Edmonton Oilers? phenomenal it was a great series it was it was everything nobody expected and and to see the jets play just play tough you know they grinded it out they they kept mcdavid in check and you know i i just thought it was such a you know a hard working like they just fought so hard to pull that out and you know when they were down what was i think it was the second game they were down was it three one or four one and came back I mean, yeah, holy crap. yeah, who who would have thought of that, right? And so, yeah, I just enjoy watching the Jets. You know, Kyle Connor, uh, he's almost a twin of my son. Um, David Larkins had that up on, on Twitter. Uh, so it, it's kind of neat to watch him because every once in a while I think, wow, that he looks so much like Josh. And the young guy they have, Stanley, he's a phenomenal defender, the big guy on skates. Wow, he's huge. But, yeah, I, I really enjoy watching the Jets. So what are, what are your thoughts against Montreal? I mean, obviously every, everybody, you know, in the last two months was like, yeah, it's going to be Winnipeg. It's going to be Winnipeg in Toronto in the second round. Oh, Winnipeg loses nine out of the last 12. It's probably going to be Edmonton, Toronto. There was very little talk about Winnipeg, Montreal. I know uh, the series, when this airs, is currently uh, underway. But this North Division, to me, encompasses the way Canada West can be as competitive, if not pretty much the same. Or would that be a fair comparison? Absolutely. You know, uh, competitive, absolutely. And that's, that's the thrill of the game. 
right? You know, you, you're training, you're working hard, you want to win. And, you know, look, look what the Jets did. Look what Montreal did, right? So pretty exciting. And, you know, as much as everyone says, oh, well, they wanted a Toronto Edmonton, you know, final in the North division, heck, go Winnipeg. Let's do this. You know what? And it's so funny. I, I, I do a, I do a hockey show using this platform uh, once or twice a week, depending. Also, have a daily show, and I'm literally doing my hockey show on on uh, Sunday night. And I, I did a weird question just just before, just before we go on the air from uh, from my co-host. He goes, "You know, Michael, what's the point of doing this?" And and I shoot him a wide look of, um. Like, what are you talking about? You know, we, we do this every week, something twice a week. He knows, yeah, but we know nothing. He said, if you look at our pets, they're nothing what we thought they would be, especially when it comes to the – because we, we both had the Jets losing in five to Edmonton, maybe six games. He said, we didn't pit the Jets to sweep. We didn't pit Toronto being up 3-1, and at the time they, they were heading into game seven. We didn't have any of this. Well, what do we know? And and I mean, I think just using that analogy, it applies to any sport, but regardless of record, whether it's basketball, whether it's hockey, if you really, 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 really wanted to commit to the game for the full length of the game, the stats, much like in Canada West and the NHL, they mean nothing. Absolutely. And that's, you know, when I think of basketball and I think of regional play, you know, we got a job to do in our region. But the best part is when you get into playoffs, anything can happen. It's a whole new season. And, you know, that's that's where, you know, Montreal and the Jets are playing. It's going to be great. Finally, two more questions uh, before I let you go back to your uh, basketball team. Uh, you've been a long-time coach of the University of Winnipeg going back a long, long ways. What, over the course of your career, have you learned not only about the school or the program, but about yourself? Because, you know, you recruit these players year after year, you know, to build competitive teams and ultimately championship teams. Is there something that you've learned about yourself, whether it's through coaching, whether it's through recruiting? over over the last number of years probably patience you know it's uh, like i feel i have the best job in the world i mean who doesn't want to go to the gym every day i mean i love it it's it's a phenomenal job and i work at a great university and i get to recruit student athletes to come to our university and ultimately they're students first and so probably the biggest thrill for me is when they come to school, they play for our program and they graduate. And so I've been very fortunate to have, you know, I've had over a hundred student athletes come through our program and play for our program. It's been an amazing journey. And so, you know, the journey continues. I, I'm looking forward to next season. It's it's going to be year 26 at U of W, year 25 coaching, you know, with COVID. Um I'm just as energized and as excited as I was in my first year. And I've always said, if I lose that passion drive, you know when it's time to retire. I'm nowhere near that. I, I love what I do and it's a phenomenal job. And you know, you've watched some of our games. I'm pretty animated when I coach. Oh yeah. I, I love the game. I'm passionate and you know, I, I I look forward. I, I'm excited now. I can't wait till the restrictions get lifted and we get back on the court. Final question. It kind of ties, tie, ties in with the other one. Uh, this may be a horrible question to end off, but it might be more more for the middle of the interview, but I'll ask it anyway. How much over a five-year cycle for recruiting do you have to balance the winning now versus looking ahead to the future? Because – you know, a team in university could have as many as four or five or six fifth-year players, but if you don't protect yourself going forward, uh, you know, your team is going to probably see a dip uh, when those players graduate in and out of your program. How as a coach do you balance the short-term 
i.e. the present year, versus the longer vision, if that makes any sense. Absolutely, yeah. It's Recruiting is 24-7, and it's, you know, recruiting is – it's in short cycles and long cycles. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're retaining athletes over time because that gives strength to your program. You know, um, another part of recruiting and longevity with your program is your coaching staff. I've been very fortunate to have Richard Gooch and Tammy Pennell in my program for a long time. Alyssa Grant is one of our assistant coaches. She's come back after playing for us. You know, Nigel Moore has been with our team as, you know, strength and conditioning. It's important in your recruiting to not only have a coach that's been around for a while, but a staff that's been together. And I think that then helps in our season. So we're always working towards winning, but you're also working towards developing. And so even when we had the young core group a couple of years ago, we were training that group to prepare for the future to win because you want to get better every year, especially when you're adding players like Kiana and Keelan. But that's where your staff is vital. You know, um, Richard Gooch is in the gym working individually with the young kids on their skills, constantly helping them, you know, and, and that improvement each year is vital so that they're, you know, they're transitioning from playing maybe spot minutes here, 10, 12 minutes, but by their fourth and fifth year, they're playing a ton and contributing. So, you know, recruiting is such an important part of your program, uh, as well as having your staff completely around you. And that's where I feel our program has been successful over the years. You know, we may not have won championships, but there's been a lot of positive, you know, development in the team and in the program. And it's like you said, too, and I mean, I don't want to put word, word, words in your mouth or anything when I say this, but it's almost like you're recruiting quality individuals and it's about the individual ahead of the academics. So if you have quality individuals that graduate and leave your program, that's almost a, that's almost a more important legacy than what you do on the, on, on the court, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, the fun part of my job. And, you know, I can go back to 2002 to 2005 when, when our program was very successful with Joanne Wells, Sally Kuznicka, Heather Thompson. You know, we had a lot of very, very good players. We were in the national championships four years in a row, lost in two national finals, you know, and people have compared, wow, you, you know, you've brought in Kiana and Keelin. How do you look? Do you feel like you have a crew like then? And, you know, we feel we have a very solid group going into this coming season. And our objective is to win. The kids talk about winning. They want to win a national championship. You know, Kiana and Keelin, you know, when they experience a national championship in 2014 together, they want to feel that again. And so, you know, you going back to what you mentioned about quality student athletes, you need quality student athletes to have a solid program. You know, you want them to, to stay and train and play. And, and that's where we love the group. We have a lot of returning players is very important and they're very excited, you know, for next season. Well, congratulations. I don't know. Yeah. Congratulations coach on a great recruiting class so far this year. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch up uh, before the season starts at nine in season on the show too. I'm going to try to make it out to most, if not all, of your home games. Because uh, all of a sudden now that uh, the uh, basketball program that you've been building, I, I can't wait to, to see all the parts in action. And uh, I'm just very uh, grateful that you were able to give me more time than we bargained for. Uh, but... Uh, no, thank you anyway for uh, joining me and uh, congratulations on all your success so far. And uh, we'll catch up uh, again leading up to the season. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate being on your show. You're doing a phenomenal job. I love what you do. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll see you at the games uh, hopefully this fall. And uh, keep doing what you're doing on the sideline. It's, it's fun. Uh, I, I got to say, it, it's fun at the broadcast to see the fact.
passion that you have. Uh, you know, for those that don't know, I, I spent many years uh, broadcasting the games on my radio station, which was basically to, to, to the right of where you are. So you're always to my left on the home bench, and you're going up and down in front of me, and it just, it, it's just, it's just so fun to watch, and uh, I can't wait to do it again this fall. Uh, thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. All right, uh, we will sign out here, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll be back with a new episode of Game Time today on Monday, talking about where the Winnipeg Jets are in their series as well as that. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you very much, Tanya, for joining me. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. And I'll talk to you on Monday.